Hello everyone, we're going to be doing something quite intriguing and interesting today. I'm going to give you a little bit more of the gist of the more complicated nature of some of the emulation factors that go into some of the extreme cores. And it's uh, kind of interesting to think that several years back when I started doing the extreme cores, there were people who were like, you can't do that. It's not going to go anywhere. It's useless. It's uh, a resistance is futile, all that fun stuff. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm going to show you exactly why I did this and execute it as far as mod proof is in the pudding. Just check it out for yourself here. We're uh, going to go into one of the more difficult games to run, Destruction Derby 64. And we're going to run it with Moopin 64 Extreme Amps Ultra. And I'm going to show you a before and after here and show you exactly why I got into doing the extreme stuff. Because uh, typically these cores and emulators in general like to be as accurate po as possible. But me... I want to be able to just run the games nicely, even if it breaks things. And I'm going to show you how far I could break things just to make this game run better right here and now. But there's a thing that is called TLB. It is essentially a translation look aside buffer. It takes uh, a memory cache and pretty much uh, placates it from your virtual memory to your physical memory. The problem is all the mini classics do not have enough memory to work with. This is not like a PC where you can have like 100 gigs of data and uh, 32 gigs of RAM. It doesn't work that way with these mini classics that have the 256 megabytes to 1 gig of RAM and just very, very minimal memory. And we know that uh, you don't have what, 300 megabytes of memory on like the SNES Classic or NES Classic without anything installed at all custom kernel wise. Uh, but let's check this out. We're going to play the game here. It's going to run god awful, but. You can see why I did the extreme performance enhancements as far as the cores are concerned. And it's still funny seeing all these topics I've read like, them extreme cores don't do anything at all. But just check it out right here. Here's before. Oh, it's like I'm slow as molasses on the water. Right? So I guess the extreme tweaks aren't going to help this game at all, right, folks? Look, I just ran out of memory. That TLB translation, look inside buffer, filled that quick. It literally filled the memory that fast. But guess what? I'm going to fix it right now. We're going to load the same game again. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, and not only that, we're going to do a little bit of the extreme turbo boost and overclock and a few other tweaks here to make the game run better. And we're going to really, really push the envelope here today, folks. You're going to be able to do this on a majority of the mini classics with these cores, like the Ludicrous N64 Extreme Amp Core, the Moopin 64 Extreme Amp Ultra Core. So let's load this in here and uh, just check what I do right now. And you get a uh, save core override. You could save game per game overrides. I recommend doing these per game in case you do something that you end up messing up. But uh, let's get in the game here. Again, there's very, very limited memory on these mini classics, so there's only so much you can do. Okay. Yeah, the Amiga 500 Mini, even though it has 512 megabytes of RAM, it really, really feels like it's so far less with the uh, very, very unoptimal nature of how it effectively works. So I'm not going to let that TOB fill up this time. So I'm going to go into Quick Menu, Core Options here. Uh, see where it says Save Game Options? I could click that. And uh, initially, it could do like Save Core Options, but I made, I actually clicked the Game Option for Destruction Derby 64. Right here, we have Extreme Turbo Boost. For a game that is this extensively difficult to run, I'd recommend putting it like uh, two. And then uh, between one and two, it's pretty good for the higher end games, especially some of them uh, Super Mario 64 hacks. And then overclock, uh, about one. Like a two, one, two hits me, you, to the ground type of thing. And then right here, uh, we have the extreme overclock. This could actually, this is kind of like a little slider, which could make the game run slower or faster. So right here, this is going to give the game at least functional operational here. We're going to do the extreme crash fix right here. We're going to ignore the TLB exceptions for this game. And by the way, don't do this on GoldenEye. It'll uh, muck up the game pretty bad. It's not going to work on GoldenEye. But if they decompile the game, it will work on GoldenEye fine because uh, it's decompiled and works on Perfect Dark. TLB is completely removed. But right here, I have... Turbo boost at 2, overclock at 1, always ignore TOB exceptions, and you know what? I'm really going to take this up here. I'm going to just go balls to the wall today. I'm going to take this up to 720p, folks. We're going to run this game in 720p resolution with the extreme amped turbo, ultra, whatever as you will. 
and then right here, we're going to crank this uh, speed up. Like, think of this as like a speed factor. We're going to really, really go up to like, uh, we'll take it up to like uh, 34. I mean, we could go even higher. We can make it like lightning fast. And this is not with distinct audio. This is literally going to be running quick. So we got our two, one, our uh, overclock here. You can push start to go back to default values. But again, I'm going to let this be at 34 to start with until this runs. And I'm going to have the TLB exceptions ignored because I do not want to have that memory fill up. And various games take longer to fill up. I mean, an example of this is if you run a game like uh, Killer Instinct, it'll fill up so quick the game will crash within 15 to 30 seconds on a majority of the mini classics. But I added some fixes to uh, help this run better and not crash as often. But again, we have the 720p. And I'm seeing if there's any other options I want to get in here. I think I'm good for now. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, back out here, quick menu, override, save, game override. Again, if I would have done core override and then I tried loading GoldenEye, it could have just crashed the game and then, oh, damn, I got to go in there and delete the stuff manually. But right here, I'm doing it by game, so I just have to worry about this one particular game. You could also, if you're using the latest RetroArch, you could actually delete the overrides with the more uh, current RetroArchs. But we got that. Close content here. Again, we're running at 720p, and just check it out for yourself. And clearly, if Destruction Derby runs at 720p, you're going to have no trouble whatsoever running Mario 64 and 720p with uh, very minimal, minimal changes with this Extreme Amped Ultra Core. And yes, I kind of went through lines of code for literally like every Nintendo 64 emulator ever, and then I thought of some of my own ideas, and I executed them, got them all working, and just... I haven't found many games I could not play the way I want to play them. And again, this is not accurate at all. I just am concerned with having a fun performance. That is exactly what I did with the virtual racing game, too. And the way some of these SA1 and, of course, the uh, various ROM hacks work for the uh, uh, Super Nintendo as well. You know, the slow ROM, fast ROM conversion. Check this out right here. Again, 720p right now. Going to option site pause here. I'll give an example of exactly when like a uh, TLB exception would occur. And uh, this is more effectively a problem when you're running CPU core Dynarec because what Dynamic Recompiler does, it halts the game, depending on which game, for a brief pause or sometimes like several seconds to recalculate the data on the fly. But if you change it to pure interpreter, it's not going to be as fast. It'll be slow as molasses. But then you don't really have to worry about the TOB exceptions. So you can run the game slow without uh, worrying about the TOB exceptions. Or you can run it fast with Dynarec. And then you got to kind of uh, like do game by game, case by case scenario for TOB exceptions. But again, you're going to see how it effectively works right now. 720p. Look how beautiful this looks. <laughs> and again, I'm running it way, way faster than I need to run it here. I mean, I get dialed back a, a bit. Right here would be a Dynarac, right here. Watch, I'll show you when the Dynarac will come in. Right when I go around this corner here is a Dynarac point. Check this out, listen. There's Dynarac right there. It's slowing down to a halt right there. But TOB exception, being ignored, helps that out. Oh, <laughs> that's so badass. But yeah, look how fast we can run it. Now, notice we didn't run out of TLB there. I'm going to go to uh, quick menu options. We're going to leave this at 2, this at 1, and take the speed factor down to maybe like 24. Okay, we're going to slow the game down intentionally here. And again, look at this. Audio is completely synced, so you're seeing there's no trickery there. Override, save game, override. Close. Okay. If there are any particular games you have issues with, let me know because I literally went through each and every Nintendo 64 game when I was recoding these cores. And I did the Ludicrous N64 Extreme Amp as well as the Moopin. I also did Parallel. And Parallel you're going to see showcased as well because that perfect dark deconstruction I have run in, in HD with the Parallel core that I did. There we go. Moopin. The only problem is that Parallel uses a lot of memory, so you're only going to be able to load one game at a time with the HD Turbo Core with that one, unfortunately. Then you're going to have to kind of like restart, uh, especially the Amiga. It's going to run out of memory, but 
You can do that one awesome, awesome game in the meantime. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So we're at 2400 here. Let's verify it's stuck. Okay. All right. The sailor's runs now. Should be a little bit more manageable speed wise. Three, two, one, go! Okay. Not as fast, but still reasonably fast. I mean, you can keep playing around with these settings until you find one that you like. You can even take it down to like uh, a lower uh, resolution if you don't want to have 720p. I think it's kind of badass having 720p here. It is really, really awesome. Awesome, awesome sauce here. There's our uh, Dynarec again. Boom! It is so awesome. Now, I'm going to give an example right here. Options. We're going to take this down to uh, 480p. And then we're going to just uh, take this to... We'll leave this at 24 right now. Okay. And then we're going to do a little perfect dark test so you can see that. But yeah, each and every game has its own special scenario as far as getting them to work. And there's like a database that's coded within the core. And I manipulated this database and inputted a database in my test results to help out games like Pilot Wings and all that. But uh, some of these settings I have core side so you can actually change them yourself. Because obviously it's not going to be user friendly to try to build your own core and change these games one by one. I have it where you can just universally change any game you want with these settings that I uh, implemented and coded in. That's what Extreme is all about, so I'm sorry that some people didn't believe in my ideas several years back, but you can see right now that they're working out pretty nicely for all you uh, mini classic users. And some people from other platforms have actually asked me to help them get and run these cores on their platforms, uh, like the Mayu Mini and all that, and it's been working pretty awesome. Welcome to season. Okay, so we're at 480 now. Two, one, go! There we go. Let's get to that down and right point. Just a little test here. But yeah, you can play around these and find whichever one you want. And then leave the game override once you have it. And Matt Franco uh, specifically went through a lot of games one by one. And did the same game override, which he actually uploaded. I'm going to have a link to that in my next release. So you uh, guys and gals could actually do it yourself. Here we go. There's that little down and rack uh, slow point right there. Pretty much where the uh, TLB would crash. That's another one down. Which reminds me of playing like Destruction Derby 1 and 2 on PlayStation 1 again. Bam! Oh, that was funny. That was like a little shunt. That's Almost like an off-kilter, off-pixel thing there. Okay, now that that's said and done, we're good on this game. Again, if you just want to reset everything, you can go start, 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 start. Now we're all at default settings there. Override, save game override, or save core override. But uh, okay, now we're gonna go into perfect dark performance mod using parallel N64 Extreme Amped Turbo HD. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but uh, this is the way I did it because we're gonna be able to run this in HD. And the performance mod completely removes the TLB. Uh, it is completely gone. It does a lot of other hacks like it adds assembly language. Uh, fixed up. It just really vastly improved this game. And I'm going to show you this for a moment here before I close up shop on this video, but I'll do a tutorial on how to actually do this game as well. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to better utilize the Moopin N64 Extreme Amp Ultra as well as the Ludicrous N64 Extreme Amp. Uh, and then uh, be able to play about any game you want to. We're going to go right to Combat Simulator here. Uh, challenges. Challenge 1 here. Except our game and we're going to go into uh retro sense once i start here you can do this with about any core on screen display on screen notifications display frame rate we're running hd at 60 frames per second you can tap l1 with the performance mod to actually see stats it's like we're on a video uh card on the computer right now look how badass this is it's running a smooth seamless 60 frames per second no tlb is a problem here so even the core uses the TLB for the game by default, it is disabled with this performance mod. Oh yeah? Do I have a weapon yet? There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perform this. You know what I need to pick up? I need to pick up that RoboCop game. That, 
That seems to be so badass for PS5. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy that. Like the one first-person shooter where you walk everywhere. And when you punch people, you feel them fly across the stage. Yeah, that's perfect. Dark is running awesome here. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. Music is great. All right, here's what I'm talking about with the core. I mean, uh, you're using a lot of memory with this, so if I actually try to load another game or close content, blah, 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 it's going to crash RetroArch every time. That is just one of the drawbacks to having this core work as nicely as it does at 60 frames per second for these games. So remember, when you run a parallel in 64 Extreme Amped, and it's a bug with the core in general, but with me adding the amplitude here to make these games run better, you're going to have a crash each and every time, but uh, just deal with it. Watch this. It's going to crash right now. Now on the PlayStation Classic, it'll just uh, crash RetroArch and you'll still be in RetroArch, but on the Amiga 500 Mini with a bad memory optimization, it's going to send you back to the main menu. So it is what it is. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video and there will be more to come.